Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Today I'm participating in Scrapbook.com's Parade for Pops. I'm one of several designers participating in the parade, showcasing the newest colors of the Scrapbook.com Pops of Color. Each designer will be showing the Pops of Color on various Father's Day projects, and I'll be using the Pops of Color in some different ways to make four cards. If you're not familiar with Pops of Color, they are a one ounce bottle of liquid embellishment that come in various colors. The Pops of Color come in a gloss, glitter, or pearl finish. The ones that I'm showing here have a gloss finish and these are the newest colors. You can see all of the bright tones in this release. They're perfect for your summer cards or scrapbook pages. So this is the Gloss Vacay Bundle. It contains 13 of the newest pops of color. I'm actually missing one though. There's a lighter purple color, which is the Soft Lavender. And you don't have to purchase them as a bundle. They can be purchased individually. And there's so many more colors than what I have here. In fact, I went on scrapbook.com's website and if I counted correctly, I believe I counted about 38 different colors. I will have a link down in the description box of this YouTube video for the Pops of Color, as well as all products that I use in my video today. I will also have product links in my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com, as well as individual pictures of each one of my cards that I create today. So in order to use these for the first time, just unscrew the cap. There is a stopper inside of this particular clear cap. I'm just going to unscrew that. And then this is the piece that I'm actually going to take out. And because it is liquid, I don't want to get it all over my hands, so I'm just using a paper towel to pull the red stopper out and then screw the cap back on. The most common method of using these pops of color is by using them as enamel dots. As I said, they are liquid, but when they dry, they do have dimension, and these have a glossy finish. So you can use them on your card projects as you need them. Or you can do like I'm doing here and create a bunch of enamel dots at once. And then you'll have them for when you need them. I'm just squeezing them onto a piece of acetate. When you're finished, you will need to let them dry. And to make sure they're fully dry, I always like to let them dry overnight. Of course, you don't have to wait the 24 hours to let them dry. They probably dry sooner. I just like to let mine dry for a longer length of time just to be sure they're fully dry. I did set them aside and this is actually the next day here and you can see that they dry hard and now I can just remove them from the acetate and you have an actual shaped enamel dot that you can use on your card projects. You would have to put glue on the back of this because now they're not sticky so you just have to adhere them to your project with glue. Another way to use these is just to squeeze the amount you need on your card or scrapbooking page and let that dry directly on the project. So for my first card, I'm using the scrapbook.com stars stencil. I'm taking a piece of smooth white cardstock and I'm adhering it to the back of the stencil with some scrapbook.com mint tape. And then I'm gonna use three blue colors. So I have the royal blue, that's my darkest. I put that at the top. And then in the middle, I put down the turquoise waters. And then finally, the sky blue. I wanna create an ombre look going from dark to light and I love how these colors in this bundle have the colors that you can do that with. So I'm using my scrapbook.com scraper and I just start at the top and move that down to the bottom and when I remove the stencil look how beautiful all those stars are with those pops of color. You can see the glossy finish it is so pretty. So you can use the leftover pops of color that are on the scraper and you can just create another background just by taking another piece of cardstock and then just adding it to the cardstock. So just scraping it off. And I'm just going up and down and all around this cardstock just to create a background. And this background I'll actually just save in my stash for another card project in the future. And look how pretty all of that gloss on that cardstock is. You can see all the shine from my light hitting it. It's so pretty. So I am working on my scrapbook.com silicone mat and notice that everything just comes right up off of the surface. I'm just using a wipe here to clean this off and I'm just cleaning up all of the mess and you can see how easily it just comes right off with a wipe, just wiping it off the scraper here. And as for the stencil, I did clean it with some hot soapy water. So I let my panel dry overnight and I'm ready to go ahead and make a card. I will be using the downtown alphabet dies. They do come in letters and numbers. 
So I'm going to die cut some of the letters out of some black cardstock. So I'm just taking some of my scrapbook.com double-sided tape, applying it to the back of the black cardstock, and then I'll use my scrapbook.com scissors and just trim away the excess tape. I love how these scissors cut right through that adhesive and the adhesive doesn't even stick on the blades. So I'm going to die cut the words rad dad. So I'll start out with rad and then I'll die cut the word dad and do that off screen. So I love these alphabet dies because you can actually use them in a couple of different ways. So when it, these die cut, it actually die cuts a very thin piece of cardstock on the inside of the letters. And you can use those extra letters, I see, you see the A there on the table off to the right, on a separate card. And I'm going to show you all of the individual letters here in just a minute that I pulled out of these words. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually putting the A together. So I have the outline there and then I'm putting the inside for the A. But you can see how all of that white space on the inside shows. So if you wanted to die cut the inside piece in a different color and piece it back in, you could totally do that. So you can have it with the card background showing from behind. You can have it pieced in with a different color or you can use these individual inside pieces by themselves. So I've worked with these alphabet dies before and I do have some cards. I just want to show you some examples. I'm going to pop here up on the screen. So this dream card is using the black cardstock letters but no letters inside. So actually the insides of the letters are all open and the cardstock underneath is exposed. And here's another example with the word celebrate die cut out of some glitter cardstock and there's white cardstock that's inserted inside of the letters. And with this example, the letters were die cut out of white cardstock and the inside has glitter cardstock inserted. And for this card, the word joy was die cut out of red glitter cardstock and both the outside and the inside letters are used in the red glitter cardstock. And if you want to see a video where I created all of those cards, I will put a link to that video up at the top right corner of this video and you can click on it here. So you can see the inside pieces of the letters. I put them there above my card. Now I'm not going to use them on this card but I can totally save them for a future card. So I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. It's glitter cardstock from the rainbow A2 size glitter paper pad and I'm going to use that as the background layer of this card front. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the glitter paper to my a2 size card base and then I'm going to add the card front to the top of that. And that blue in the glitter cardstock, it matches those pops of color blue stars perfectly. So now I'm going to come in with three more colors of the pops of color and I'm going to create an ombre look inside of these letters. So instead of adding cardstock inside all of these letters, I am adding the pops of color to fill that in and creating an ombre look. So the darkest color that I put on top is the coral sunset. Then I go in with the orange squeeze and then the lightest color is the summer punch. And if you happen to mess up, you can actually use a poker tool and just kind of clean up the edges. And you can also use that poker tool to just kind of smooth out the ombre look of those pops of color. So I let that card dry overnight and you can see all of the beautiful detail and dimension and the glossy finish that the pops of color have on those letters. Isn't that pretty? I love that look. So here's some photos of my first finished card. And moving on to my second card, I'm going to be using the Brutus Monroe Circle Tone Stencil. So here I'm taking some smooth white cardstock, attaching it to the back of my stencil with some scrapbook.com mint tape. And I'm using the scrapbook.com fog ink. This is a light gray ink. And I'm just going over the stencil to fill in all of those circles. And when I remove the stencil, I have this very light gray pattern on my cardstock. So now I can come in with all of my pops of color and I can just squeeze them out on all of these dots to create a fun circular look with all of these 
pops of color. So if I didn't have that stenciled background, I never would have been able to get all of these dots in a perfectly aligned circular pattern. So by using this stencil and applying it with a light gray ink, it allows me to get the perfect circular pattern. And you can't even see that light gray ink underneath those enamel dots when they are dry. But I can use any colors I want going in this circular pattern. Now sometimes when you squeeze the enamel dots onto the paper, you might have a little point or peak form at the end. And to fix that, just tap underneath your cardstock to flatten it out. And that's what you see me doing on occasion here on this card front. So while I finish this up, I do wanna mention that I will have a list of all of my products that I use in this video down in the description box. And for each card, I will have all of the names of the pops of color that I used listed. Now for this card, I did bring in the Rudolph Red, which was from a previous release and I did add that as my last row of circles. I did let that background dry overnight and you can see all of the beautiful dimension on that background. So for this card, I'm bringing in the Sunny Studio Stamps Summer Sweets stamp set. It has all of these summer sweets. There's a Coke bottle, there's an iced coffee, popsicle, ice cream, milkshake, and I could totally see the pops of color being used in the hot fudge sundae for the topping as well as that popsicle topping, but I'm gonna be using the Coke bottles in this set. So I stamped out two of the Coke bottles. I'm just gonna color this up really quick with my Copic markers using E49 on the outside edges, and that is just the darkest brown that I have there, and then I'm coming in with E47 over top of the E49 and extending more towards the center, and then filling that white space in with the E44. Next I'm going to come in with the R27 and go around the label. That's my darkest red. I'm coming in with the R24 and then the R22 in the middle. I'm going to add a little bit more of the R27 to the edges there and also to the cap. And then I'm going to come in with my B0000 and fill in the glass part at the top of the bottle. I did color in the second one exactly the same and then stamped out the word soda inside of the label. So here I'm taking a piece of red cardstock from the Christmas A2 paper pad. I'm going to attach this panel onto the red cardstock. I will be using the scrapbook.com Bold Basics Alphabet dies. They come in a pack that has both the capital letters and the lowercase letters. I'm going to be using the capital letters only and I die cut the word pop out of some black cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and arrange my soda bottles in the middle of the panel and I will add the words pop to the bottom of that panel. Now I am adding glue to the back of these cardstock pieces and I'm actually attaching the cardstock pieces to the pops of color. Obviously you cannot attach these flat to the cardstock because there's so much dimension with the pops of color on this card. I actually did not have any problem with the cardstock adhering to the pops of color on my card front. So it did stick and it's not coming off. I did add that panel to an A2 size card base. And now I'm just pulling off the sentiment um, from the stamp set, putting it on an acrylic block, and I'm gonna stamp out you're the coolest on the inside of my card. So I have you're the in black and then coolest in the cardinal red scrapbook.com ink. So here's the sentiment on the inside. And that completes my card. So you can see all of that beautiful, colorful, dimension with these pops of color on this card. So moving on, I'm going to show you how to use the pops of color with an embossing folder. I'm going to show you how you can get a really beautiful design with your pops of color and your embossing folders. So the embossing folder that I'm using is the Catch a Wave embossing folder by Pink and Main. I'm putting a piece of watercolor cardstock inside of my embossing folder. And I'm going to use the royal blue. This is the royal blue, the darkest blue that I have. And I'm just outlining some of the lines on this embossing folder. Now you don't have to outline these lines. I just wanted to have some of these lines defined on my cardstock when I 
um, complete this look. So that's why I'm outlining them. If you wanted just to squeeze your pops of color all over the inside, you can do that too. So here I'm just using some of the darkest just to create some of the lines. And next I'm going to come in with my mid-tone. This is the turquoise waters and just fill in some more of those lines. Then I'm going to come in with my lightest color. This is the sky blue and just fill it all in. So you don't have to go over the lines. Again, you can just you know, put the pops of color on there. Here I'm just spreading it out with a paintbrush and then just adding some more color where I see fit. Notice that I did not put the pops of color all over the entire embossing folder because the piece of cardstock that I'm using is just A2 in size. So I don't need to put it all over the embossing folder. And when you press the embossing folder together onto the cardstock, it's going to move. So you can see how the pops of color, it actually will move closer to the edges of the cardstock. Now you can always come back in with some more pops of color and add to some of the white areas if you wanted to add some more and I'm just spreading it here with a paintbrush. And when I'm finished, I will clean this with hot soapy water, which I've already done. And I'm also wanted to show you here that I just had a few particles left of the pops of color and I'm just using one of my green scrub sponges and it just comes off super easily. So I did let that panel dry overnight and now I'm just coming in with some of the ball ground blue ink, I'm just going over some of the edges to get rid of some of the white area around the edges. And just to note, you can only apply the ink to the exposed cardstock. If there's pops of color over the cardstock, you really can't apply the ink over top of the pops of color because it has that glossy enamel finish. But if there's any white exposed cardstock on this layer, you can totally add ink to it. And I did come in with a little bit of a darker ink. This is the surfboard ink from scrapbook.com. So there is my panel using the embossing folder. Now we're going to turn this into a card. So I'm using the um, Sunny Studio Stamps Fantastic Friends stamp set. And I did stamp out a lot of the images for this set, but I'm only going to be using the shark. So I'm just going to be coloring up the shark here. I'm using my C markers. I have C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 that I'm coloring this up with. And then I'm going to be using the R20 for the inside of the mouth. So just applying a little bit of shading with some Copic markers and then I will cut this out and use this on my card. I am going to be bringing in the scrapbook.com bold basic alphabet dies and I'm also going to be bringing in some of the scrapbook.com cheerful sentiments. I love these sentiments because you can use them for any time of year. You have some New Year's, congratulations, anniversary, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, birthday. So you can actually put these together to say Happy Father's Day or Happy Birthday. There's also some smaller fonts down below. So I'm going to actually be using the Happy Father's Day in the smaller fonts for my card today. So this is the cheerful sentiments, but I also want to show you that there is a, another set with some different fonts, and these are the sentiments for every occasion. So you can see there's there's a lot of script fonts on this one, but it does the same thing. You have the Christmas, the birthday, the anniversary, the Thanksgiving, the Father's Day, the Mother's Day. So you can use these any time of year to put these sentiments together to form whatever type of sentiment you need for the holiday or occasion that you're giving a card for. So I went ahead and stamped out the Happy Father's Day on some white cardstock and I'm adding it there to the bottom left hand corner and then I die cut the bold basics dies. I die cut the word dad. I use the uppercase and the two lowercase letters and that's out of the black cardstock and then the shark I'm actually going to have popping out of the D in dad. I'm adding that to a A2 size card base. A2 size is four and a quarter by five and a half and that will complete my card. I love the look of the pops of color using the embossing folder. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to show you how we can stamp using the pops of color. So I'm going to be using this stamp set from Pink and Main. This is called Two Can Do It. I'll be using the leaves in the stamp set to make a background and then I'm going to use the frog image for the center of the card. So I'm starting out by taking, I believe this is the Kelly Green pops of color. I'm putting some here on my silicone mat and then I'm going to take a brayer and I'm going to smooth out this pops of color. 
Next, I'm going to take one of my leaf stamps from the stamp set and I just ink it up with some of the pops of color and stamp it down onto my cardstock. And then I can just add more of the pops of color and smooth it out with the brayer as I need to and then continue in that process to create a background on this cardstock. So I'm just doing some background stamping here, just creating my own pattern. I like to think of it as creating my own pattern paper. I like to do this often. And now I'm taking the key lime color and I'm doing the same thing. So I just put it on my silicone mat and I use my brayer to smooth it out. And then I'm using the other leaf stamp in this set and stamping it down on the card front. I did clean my brayer going from one color to the next and I just used a wipe to clean that off and I also used a wipe to clean off the pops of color on the stamp and it did come right off. Just don't let it sit for too long and then you can just use your wipe to clean it off. So this color is the olive color and I am um, doing the same thing. So just putting some of the olive color on my silicone mat using my brayer to smooth it out and then inking up the stamp. And again, I'm cleaning the stamp when I switch from one color to the next. But of course you don't have to, if you wanted to mix the colors, by all means, you don't have to um, clean your stamp. Maybe you wanted to have different colors in your leaves. You can totally use more than one color on here. I think that would look great as well. So again, just stamping out this background until I have the majority of the white space covered. I even decide to do some overlapping with my stamps and you'll see that coming up here shortly. So I actually will come in with some of the darker color and overlap it with some of the lighter color. I think that that gives a really nice look as well. So I did let that panel dry overnight and now I'm coming in with some of the scrapbook.com buttercream ink and I'm going over the entire panel with the buttercream ink. This is a light, light orange ink. Now I'm coming in with the next color. This is the orange cream and I'm going over the edges to make a little bit darker. I'm also going to bring in the orange spice which is the third darkest orange ink in the orange group of scrapbook.com inks and I'm going to go over the edges again just to make it a little bit darker. So this card background is going to have a very tropical feel and now I'm coming back in with the buttercream. This is the lightest ink just to add some more ink to the center. So I stamped out the frog and I'm going to go ahead and color this up with my Copic markers. I'm adding the YG05 all over the entire frog just to put down a layer of green and then I'm going to come in with my YG09 and I'm just going to add some shadows to this frog. So just adding a little bit of the YG09 around the outside edges and some of the inside edges. And once I add the dark I will come in with my YG03 to blend those colors out. But as I was coloring with the YG03, I noticed that it was running out of ink. That's why you see me coloring there on the edge. So I switched this out to my YG01 and just finished the blending. Next, I'm going to take two of the scrapbook.com circle dies. I'm going to use a piece of red cardstock from the Christmas A2 paper pad. And I'm going to put the smaller die inside the larger one, just nest them together. Using some scrapbook.com mint tape, I'm going to tape them to hold them in place. I want to make sure that I have equal space between those two dies so I get a nice frame that's evenly spaced all around. So I die cut that with my die cutting machine and here is my frame that I cut out and now I'm ready to work on my sentiment. So I'm using a powder tool over some black cardstock. Before I do some heat embossing, I am going to stamp out a sentiment with some Versamark ink. The sentiment says never frog get how amazing you are. Once I stamp that down, I will remove that from my Misty and I'm going to use some white embossing powder. I'm just going to sprinkle that on and then I will heat set that. Now I did use the white powder over the cardstock just so that when I do use the embossing powder, I don't have embossing powder stick where there is no ink. So after I heat set that, I'm going to use some precision layering dies from Spellbinders. These are mini slimline in size and I have one that actually will fit perfectly over the sentiment to die cut it out. 
and I'm going to use that on my card. So now I'm ready to put the whole card together. I'm going to take another piece of this red card stock. I'm going to layer that onto an A2 size white card base. Next, I'm going to add my patterned paper that I created on top of the red card stock. Next, I'm going to add my circle frame. So just put some glue on the back of that, add it to the top center of that card front. I'm going to add the sentiment at the bottom of the frame, and then I'm going to add the frog right in the middle of the circle. I am going to be using some of the pops of color to add some dimension to my frog, and I have to say that when I first saw the stamp set and saw all these circles that are actually on the stamp set, I thought, wouldn't that be a great idea to use the pops of color to fill in all of these circles? So technically, you could have used a marker and colored these in different colors, but I wanted to add some dimension to make it look like a bunch of warts on this frog, so I'm I'm just using various shades of the green pops of color to add to the circles on this frog. So I'm using the same colors that I use for the background of my card. I'm using the olive, the Kelly green, and the key lime. And then I'm going to come in and add some dots to the darker green leaves on the background of my card. And once I finish doing that, this card will be complete. So I hope that I've inspired you to use the pops of color in some different ways. Again, all product links will be down in the description box below, as well as in my coordinating blog post at lisamearsdesigns.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified of all videos from me. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.